Hi everyone, this is Samuel Kampa. I'm a client success lead here at Yellowdig as well as one of the data folks on the team. And today I'm going to show you how to use the Yellowdig pilot dashboard. For starters, I'm just going to go through the basic how-to to get you up and running. And then we'll start to talk a bit about the rationale behind the report, why we're doing a live data stream, as well as get into the interpretation behind the visualizations that you'll see in the dashboard. So without further ado, let's start going through the steps. Um, the first thing that you do is generate a Yellowdig API key. For the sake of this demo, I am Paul Professor. So in my home page here, I'll go to user options in the corner, account settings, API keys, and then I'm going to create an API key. And this will let Observable know that you are an API user and you are licensed to access the data that you would normally have access to just by virtue of the account and the permissions you have in your Yellowdig account. So we're going to press generate key. I'm going to copy the key and then we'll just keep that on the clipboard for now. That's step one. Step two is we create a free observable account. Um, this is like a Jupyter Notebooks environment if you're familiar. If you're not familiar, don't worry. It's super easy to use. We're going to go to sign in and then you can choose um, how you want to log in, either Twitter, Google, GitHub. We'll do Google. And I'm going to sign in with a new account. I'm going to make this my personal. And I'll put in my Gmail password. And now I'm going to choose a username for myself. Call this Samuel Compa2 since I already have an account. And now I'm in. That was step two. Step three is adding your Yellowdig API key to your observable account. So this is the key that we just copied. So all we do is go to this page, click on new secret. For key name, we're going to say YD API key in all caps and notice these underscores. For the key value, we're just gonna paste in our key. Keeping in mind that this is your key to be kept secret, you can share it with observable via this route, but only this route. And um, you can use it personally, but we strongly, strongly discourage you from sharing those keys with anyone else as that can compromise your student's data, which obviously neither you nor I want to do. So we'll create a secret and now we're good to go. You can see this key is stored under your name. We just went through the first three steps. So now we're on to the final step, which is to create a fork of this dashboard, which just means creating a copy of the dashboard that has access to your secrets and your secrets alone. So first we're going to refresh this page so that it knows that we're logged into an account and that will allow us to create a fork. I'm going to click this fork button. It'll ask to allow your secrets. You say, okay. And now you're going to have access to the data report. Congratulations. You set up your fork of the Yellowdig pilot dashboard. This is your private dashboard that you can use to access any data that you as an admin or as an instructor rightfully has access to. So let's start accessing some data. We start by putting in the network title. Let's say this is University of Yellowdig. You can see here it says provide valid network name or community ID. This is a cue to us to put in the unique identifier either for the network or for a community. So let's just start with a network case. This is the name of the network. It's the part that comes before yellowdig.app in the URL. And we can set a date range, which determines um, how far back we go in time when we're pulling events um, and generating metrics on their basis. So let's go back to May. And now you can see that it's downloading event records. And here we can see the result of that. So posts versus comments, this is calculating just the number of posts versus the number of comments. And this is one of our lodestar metrics, the conversation ratio. We want that number to be as high as possible within reason. 
um, because we want students to have conversations. This is one of the things that sets Yellow Dig apart from the traditional discussion board experience. As a rough benchmark, we generally recommend a conversation ratio of at least eight. So try to induce your students to comment on each other's posts as much as possible and make sure that there's a really big gap here between the posts and the comments. Here we've got an interactive network graph, which is pretty fun. You can hold it around, you can move the nodes. If you hover over, you should be able to see um, the student's yellow dig ID. And it'll say how many members have authored a comment at this time and then calculate some connection metrics on this basis, giving you the most and least connected members, um, as well as network density. You want this number to be as close as one as possible. If the number is one, that means that everyone is connected to everyone else. If it's zero, that means that people aren't connected. This gives you an idea of the extent to which students are listening. So our listening metrics are number of post views and number of reactions. Um, unlike in traditional discussion boards where the emphasis is on content productions and students often don't read each other's content um, beyond the perfunctory, we uh, find that students read and engage with each other a lot. And so we want these uh, orange circles to be significantly larger than the blue circles, showing that students are reading or consuming content more than they're generating content. Are they engaging? This gives you an idea over time of how students are engaging. Because this is a community, an ongoing conversation, we don't want to see big blips in the radar, big spikes in the graph. Instead, we want this to be as smooth as possible so that students are participating not just in a rush the day before the deadline, but throughout the week, so they're actually enjoying each other's company. And this is also confirmed through the activity map. If you've got a Sunday night deadline, you can expect big spikes over here, which is what we don't want. That's a bad experience for everyone. Instead, we want a fair amount of green throughout the weekday so that students are engaging with each other regularly, so that they're logging in multiple times a week, so that it's not merely a chore, it's something that they enjoy doing. If you're seeing big spikes, try to rethink what your um, content strategy might be. I would suggest even dialing back a content strategy so that students are leading the discussion rather than just the instructor. And um, Remind students that the earlier in the week they post, the more likely they are to earn social points, namely points from reactions and from receiving comments, which will in turn make it more likely that they start, that they initiate conversations, that they're leaders in the classroom. So why did we have you go through all this work? Why didn't we just make a, a PDF for you? So there are a few reasons. For one, this gives you on-demand, up-to-date data. This is pulling in data live from the platform. Um, and it's data that you can download as JSON or as CSV if you're a researcher and you want to really study this data on your own. The other thing is that in Observable, the code that generates these graphs is exposed to the end user, which means that you can check our work. So we're trying to be as transparent as possible. Um, if you are uh, technically minded, you can go into our technical appendix here and look at how we're manipulating some of the data to get it shaped so that it passes into these um, graphs. If uh, all that is Greek to you, no problem. Um, you never need to touch the uh, technical appendix in order to understand what's going on here. That's it for now. If you have any questions, concerns, if you're having trouble setting up the dashboard, don't hesitate to reach out to us at clientsuccess at yellowdig.com. Thanks so much. Enjoy.